Yeah, um, from last week, uh, well, last game, um, Ben Davis obviously uh, yeah, came on with a hamstring, so um, yeah, probably looking at about a month or so for him out. Um, Gio and so, uh, also, um similarly, although it's it's a bit harder to sort of diagnose where he's at at the moment, we're, we're going to sort of send him for further tests uh, Monday to see exactly what the issue is, but um, he'll miss this weekend. Uh, Dane Scarlett's picked up uh, uh, an injury as well at training, so he'll miss out. And um, that's it really, and then sort of Coming back, uh, the only one that sort of joined the main group uh, today has been uh, Romero, um, and that's it. I think everyone else um, who's injured still training away from the main group. Is Romero close? Well, he's he's just sort of started training, so uh, yeah, fair to say, probably might be a bit quick this weekend. You obviously have made a couple of signings this week, nice and early as you wanted in the window. Uh, Radu Dragasin, um, we've seen the clips, we've seen the sort of stats, but what do you like about him, particularly you know, as a player, but also as a person? How will he fit into what you're trying to do here? Yeah, look, um, you know, obviously we, 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 we knew that sort of that position was a priority position for us. Um, going into the January window, we... Um, <coughs> We kind of went through the first half of the year. You know, we let sort of Davis and Sanchez go after the window closed. So we kind of knew that if the right opportunity came in January, that uh, you know we had to sort of try and bring somebody in. And so we we did a fair bit of work on it. And uh, you know, once we got sort of closer to the the time where we had to make a decision about which way to go, um, you know, Johan and his team sort of did a lot of work, background work on it. And um, you know, he he I think he's just a good fit for us from um, you know football perspective um, you know certainly he has some great attributes as a young player um, you know and you know after my chats with him obviously as a person as well I think he's you know he's he's come here sort of with the right motivations about why he wants to make the next step and why Tottenham's the right club for him so I think he'll fit in real, really well with the group we've got here at the moment um, you know there's quite a few of them sort of at a you know, similar age bracket and um, yeah, part of that process is you know, hopefully we can build a team that sort of grows together and uh, yeah, I'm sure he'll be a good fit for that. We know a lot more about Timo Werner. We've seen a bit more of him in the Premier League. But what do you want to see from him in a Spurs shirt over the next few months? Look, again, I thought it was just a real good opportunity uh, for us um, you know, when it was presented to me uh, you know, before the new year that um, we kind of knew, particularly with... With Sonny going away for such a, a period of time, and <coughs> you know, we still felt we, we we probably needed another player in the front third. And whilst you know, centre back was a priority, if, if a good opportunity came, um, you know, we wanted to move fairly quickly. And again, you know, I had a good chat to Johan about it, and he, oh, I thought Timo would be a really good fit for us um, stylistically. Um, certainly has the attributes we look for in a player in that space. He can play all three positions, which adds kind of some real depth for us and, <coughs> and quality in the front third and uh, and again you know after I had a chat to him uh, you know he's he's really motivated he really likes you know the opportunity that you know Tottenham can give him in terms of where he's at in his career and I think it, it can add to us as a, um, you know as a group. Charlie. Hi Ange, um, just staying on, on Timo he, he said you both had a chat before he came <coughs> Uh, and he spoke about the flexibility that he has in attack. Um, with Son obviously away for the next month or so, do you think it's likely we'll see him playing out on the left? And where do you see him specifically fitting into that attack? No, I think part of the attraction was that he, he can play sort of left, right. He can play through the middle. And um, as I said, with, with Sonny away, obviously, you know, we, we've still got a fairly extensive um, injury list and we've kind of used... Deki Kulosevsky, you know, in the wide areas in midfield. And I just think having Timo in gives us those that flexibility and opportunity to play him anywhere there, depending on the game. We can change it during the game. So um, that was part of the appeal that I think is equally comfortable in uh, in all those areas. Just one more for me. Um, looking ahead to <coughs> Manchester United, um, they've been inconsistent this season. So what are you expecting? <coughs> what can you expect from them on Sunday? 
I think you, you go to these games expecting them to be at their best. Like I said, they've been inconsistent, but when they've played well, they're, they're still a very, very good football side, and um, they've certainly got some real quality right throughout their team, and uh, and particularly at Old Trafford, you know, it's going to be a difficult game. The supporters will be behind them, so um, we're expected a, a tough game. Uh, you know, a great challenge for us, uh, but you know, so far, you know, in, in those kind of venues and in the bigger stadiums against the top team, so far we've done fairly well, but it'll be another good challenge for us um, come Sunday. Ian. Hi, Ange, how are you? Good, thanks, mate. Um, Hugo Lloris has gone, Harry Kane's gone, Eric's gone to, to Bayern Munich as well. Feels like there's been a real changing of the guard here in the last few months. Do you feel like this is now getting towards being your team? No, it's it's been my team from day one. You know, I take responsibility for the team from the moment I arrived, and uh, I haven't felt like it's anyone else's team but mine uh, from the first day. But as you said, the, the, and I've said a few times that you know, the club made a conscious decision that kind of to pivot and, and change in the way we went about things. And for that to happen, you need to also have you know, change in in personnel. And um, <coughs> as you said, Hugo left, and uh, you know, Eric. Eric moves on to another sort of chapter in his career. He's, he's another one who's had a, a fantastic career here at um, Tottenham. You know, he's, he's left his mark. Um, he was part of a you know a very very good football side that you know, made many great memories for our supporters here. And uh, you know, I think he he, he certainly leaves uh, you know his mark on on his time here at Tottenham. And you know, he moves to another big club and hopefully um, has success in his next career. And uh, yeah, for us, it's just a, a constant sort of evolution of yeah, you know, um, trying to inch forward and, and step forward to, to becoming sort of the team we want to be. And as I keep saying, we're still at the early stages of that. Timo Werner was a little bit unlucky in the Chelsea. In fact, the terms of the fact that when he arrived, it was during COVID. <coughs> largely, most of his career was played during <coughs> an uncertain season where we had no crowds and then limited crowds back. His time at Chelsea doesn't make him a bad player, but how much... Is it for you as a manager to kind of prove to everybody in England he is a good player by what he shows at Spurs? Yeah, I, again, I, I don't look too much into that. I, I kind of look at I always, you know, when, when talking about bringing players in. For me, it's do I see them, you know, playing in the football team that that, that I've got right now and I want to create and. If I do see them from a football perspective, then it's about understanding where they are in their lives and, and you know their own sort of careers, um, you know. And, and obviously, Timo was at a point where he was looking for you know for for something to, to sort of change from his current status, and there was a possibility that moving was one of those options. And <coughs> I said once I spoke to him, it's, it's about where he's at now. What, what's happened in the past is not really relevant. It's, you know, he's still he's still his good age. He's still very motivated. Um, you know, he's got national team aspirations. He, you know, and he wants to play at the highest possible level. And this football club offers him that opportunity now. Finally, we're at the stage where we're having our winter break. You'll play this week, you won't play next week until the, the FA Cup. You've just come from Celtic where you have a proper winter break actual proper time off is the Premier League should it either have a proper break or should it not bother this half and half kind of like some teams playing one week and then some the other week what, do you have a view on that not really I mean it's it's hard because when you look at the calendar um, particularly here in, in, in England and the Premier League and the demands on players you know, on the one hand it makes sense to, to have some sort of break but the flip side of that is it probably means they cram more games either side of it. So it's hard to find, you know, a kind of clear solution for that. Um, I think the, the bigger concern moving forward is just the actual load that, that players have to carry these days, just in the number of games, tournaments, um, you know, representative football they have to play and, you know, coming up with a calendar that allows them to, you know, play at their best and perform at their best without... You know, too much attrition from a physical perspective. George. Angelo, um, when Timo was at Chelsea, I think he had a record of 16 disallowed goals. Um, so just sort of wondering, is, he was caught offside a lot as well. Is that he's just a very unlucky player? Is that something that you've identified that you can make him better at? Because that could potentially be a lot of points for Tottenham this season if you can convert those into legitimate goals. Yeah, again, I think... That's probably not 
the way I look at it. Like I said, I'm looking at today and you know what he can give us today, and not you know looking at something that happened three, four years ago. Is I just don't think he's relevant. Um, I dare suggest he's a different player, certainly a different person. You know, we all sort of you know with the more experiences we have, we we evolve. We we kind of grow up in many sense, you know, there's more maturity, he's probably a different stage of his life, so again, I, I don't look at it that way, <clears throat> what I look at is, if we bring, you know, Timo in, can he contribute to the side we have today, and <coughs> and the way we play, and and like provided his motivations are right, I think, I saw there was an opportunity there for him and for us to, to sort of use this as a platform um, to help him, to help us, um, you know, achieve our goals. Um, on Jagerson, um, you said you had conversations with him. Can you just tell us what you said to him to make into buying your projects and join Tottenham rather than buying Munich? Because there was talk that he was possibly going there. No, look, I mean, I don't try and sell anything. Like I said, it's just a conversation. And, um, you know, we, like with all, you know, with Timo and every player I've signed, it's just a conversation about sort of, <laughs> what I believe and sort of my thoughts on them as, as, as players where I see them fitting in and um, and sort of trying to create a sort of picture in their head about you know what what they'll encounter when they get here and what we're trying to build and, and the rest is up to them it's not um, I think yeah you know, part of the key for me is that they want to come to this football club I'm, I'm not going to bend their arm or try and convince them you know Part of them is part of it is them having a buy in to get excited about coming to us. And you've done <coughs> two people coming in, two players coming in, one gone. Did you speak to the club about doing business early, and how important is that for you that you've got two players in on the 12th of January already? Yeah, I think I, I spoke about it in here that you know I thought you know, from our perspective if we could do things early, but it's easier said than done because. Um, Whilst we may have a desire to do things early, you know, you've got to have all parties agreeing to that, you know, clubs and players, and it's not easy to do, particularly in January. Um, but I think the key thing for us was, you know, from the chairman to, as I said, Johan, his team, Scott, myself, we're all pretty, we're all very aligned in, you know, what we wanted to do, and we got our targets early, and then, so we, it wasn't a matter of sort of, chasing down too many things it was pretty clear what we were trying to do and if it didn't happen then we'd move on but um, I think the fact that we're all sort of aligned and really clear on sort of what our objectives were allowed us to you know sort of be sitting here now with two players in which is great um, not so much for Sunday but we know we've got a two-week break which means you know we get at least a couple of weeks working with the lads to, to get them up to speed and, and then hopefully by then we get some of the injured blokes back and um you know, a couple of weeks later, we'll get the international guys back, and hopefully that means we're in we're in good shape because we brought the lads in early. Charlie, can I just clarify what are the Dane and Geo injuries? Uh, both muscle injuries, but not clear. Dane's uh, hamstring, uh, Geo still not clear. We're still trying to work that out. I just wanted to ask because there have been a few hamstring injuries obviously this season. I know you've spoken about this before when you're at Celtic. What do you put that down to? Is that bad luck? Is that no, I think I've spoken playing? about that before. It's part of you know the, the game model we have, and it's obviously um, you know requires a, a really big physical output, but also the fact that we we haven't been able to sort of you know feel, because of the circumstances rotate the squad too much. I mean, probably Ben Davis, a classic example of that, who has played you know a hell of a lot. And we haven't been been able to sort of rotate him out, and uh, just a consequence of sort of the way we play, the way we train. But at the same time, we. I think, you know, once we get sort of a more robust and, and sort of deeper squad, we'll be able to overcome that. With that in mind, would you kind of tweak things in training or just see it as, a, as you said, a consequence of how you want to play? No. Um, how we play and how we train is why we're where we are. Uh, Ali, please. <coughs> Um, let's just ask you about the type of players you sign. Obviously, all players have to work very hard to get to this to this level. It feels like maybe a majority. I mean, it could be a coincidence that the players that you sign at Spurs, especially, have had little setbacks. Maybe they've dropped down leagues, been relegated, or they've had to start again, or they've had sticky kind of spells in their career. Is that part of a character you look in a player that they've kind of been able to overcome challenges and maybe make them a tougher player as a result? No, not, not necessarily. I mean, you, you take it all into account, though. I mean, like, 
like I said, it's not you know, it's, it's not an exact science, but the more information you have, I think, the better chance you have of making you know, a, a good decision around it. So you take it all into account. You obviously look at the player's history and kind of how they've got to where they've got to and it doesn't mean you exclude people who kind of have had a, a sort of smooth transition in their careers, but there isn't many footballers who haven't had setbacks in their careers. Even the very best will, you know, if you track back, there'll, there'll be some moment in their career where you know, they've had some sort of adversity they've had to fight back from. That's part of you know, the battle to get to, to this level. So it's not something that I kind of try and highlight. It's more, you know, like I said, just trying to gather as much information about players and their background and kind of understanding the kind of people they are and where they are in terms of their sort of you know, journey as a footballer. Um, Radu Dragosin, I think he has to get a work permit. Are you confident he'll have that in time to play a part at the weekend? Um, yeah, from what I've been told, again, it's not my area, but from what I've been told, everyone's uh, pretty confident he'll be uh, available for Sunday. And are you done in the transfer market in terms of incomings or are you going to look for any more opportunities? Uh, we'll see. Like I said, we had some pretty clear sort of objectives which we've kind of ticked off for now and, uh, you know, there's still... I, uh, I think I said every window is an opportunity for us to get better. If there's an opportunity for us to get better, we'll take it. But in terms of what we were trying to achieve going into it, um, you know, I'm really pleased that we've got two players in who I think will play a very important part for us um, second half of the year and beyond. Okay, back to Theodore, please. <coughs> Hello, uh, we came from uh, Romania for uh, Radu Dragosin. Um, uh, first of all, uh, I would like to, to, to say that uh, uh, the, the English uh, colleagues, the English uh, journalists, uh, have, the, have a big advantage that uh, they, can, uh, they can see you and speak to you every week. And this is not for us, maybe. I don't know if they think it's an advantage. <laughs> I know what you're saying. Uh, first of all, um, uh, how did you, uh, how did, when did you realize that you really need uh, Radu, and uh, which was the his best quality? Uh, I don't know uh, the quality that impressed you most, attracted you. Yeah. Um, look, uh, as I said, we we we've kind of been working on the sort of centre-back position pretty much since the summer window uh, closed and uh, you know, there's been a whole list of players that we've kind of worked through methodically and, um, you know, a lot of that work's been done by the scouting department and then uh, obviously Johan uh, you know, came in and, and, and Rob McKenzie and, and the team started working into further detail and kind of presented to me probably, <coughs> I don't know, f six weeks ago and... Um, you know, f from that onwards, Radu was always kind of on the radar as the one of the players that we thought would be, um, you know, a, a good option for us. And then it was about sort of just following, trying to get as much information, as I said before, about him um, as a player, as a person. Uh, we obviously uh, tried to talk to as many people and we had him scouted, obviously, again. And, and um, you know, I was, I've been following him since we kind of highlighted him. And uh, I think... Once we, you know, in my mind, once we got down to the real detail of it, I thought he was the best option for us. So, you know, before the window opened, <coughs> you know, we kind of made a, we made a decision that Rada was going to be our number one priority. And, um, you know, I like, I like his defensive attributes. I like his physical attributes. I think there's still a lot uh, of growth in him. There's a lot um, of improvement in him. He's only 21. He's had one year in the Serie A, uh, not even a full year, um, and I think he fits kind of the profile of the kind of players we want here. Um, how will pass Radu Dragosin uh, from the low defence of Genoa uh, to the ag aggressive, ultra aggressive, I, I can say, high defensive of high defence of uh, uh, Tottenham, and uh, how will be the fight of three very good players, Van der Ven? Uh, Kuti Romero and uh, Radu uh, for for just two positions in the middle of the of the uh, of the defense. Uh, you you always played almost you always played uh, four defense, mm. four two three one or four yeah. three three. Uh, but you might change uh, the system for it, for for them. 
to have all three in the team? Uh, no, because um, even though you describe it that way, the reality is I've had zero centre backs for two positions <laughs> most of this year. So, and I've had to play full backs in there. So, the reason we want Rado in is because you know we know that you know it's not just injuries, but there's certain games we want to change things, and we need more than two top centre backs. And you know, bringing Rado in gives us that opportunity now to have three top centre backs. Um, different uh, different games will call for different things. Um, allows us to sort of um, manage the playing time of those players so we don't get as many injuries as we've had. Um, so that was really you know, important. And, and in terms of the different style, it's something I spoke to Radu about, that we obviously play very differently from you know what he's used to, but he, he liked that. You know He was attracted to that. It's what he thinks he needs for the next stage of his career. And um, again, that that was pleasing to me because it will be different, very different. But, you know, again, I think he's a, he's a quick learner and already he's asking all the questions he needs to ask and what he needs to do to improve, and I'm sure he'll do that. Um, uh, our national, uh, national coach, Eduard Jordanescu, would like to see him playing almost every, every week, every day, because the, uh, because, uh, the European Championship is uh, five, uh, five months away. Uh, are you uh, going to to, uh, to give him uh, as many uh, opportunities to, to play? He'll have the same opportunities as everyone else. Uh, but also, um, if I think if Radu just wanted to play, he would have stayed at Genoa. He's come to a big club. When you go to a big club, you know that you have to compete. That's part of your development. And I think even for the Romanian national team, Radu being at a big club, competing against the World Cup winner in Romero and Mickey Van der Ven, who's, I think, um, fast will become one of the you know, best defenders in his space, I think is exactly where Radu needs to be and it'll benefit the national team. Uh, uh, the last question, uh, uh, will you, uh, are you going to, to, to put him in the squad uh, on Sunday? Uh, we'll see how... Um, Hopefully all the paperwork gets done, but if all the paperwork gets done, he will be in the squad, yes. And in the first lineup? Uh, <coughs> I usually tell the team first before I tell the journalists, so we'll just wait and see, okay? okay. To finish with George, please. Thank you. Hi, Ange. Um, are you sort of at the stage now in terms of the Premier League table where you're kind of looking at it? And, and if so, I guess it's probably more externally, but there's eight points between Tottenham and Man United. Does that kind of raise the significance of this match for you or do you have to ignore that? I'd have to ignore it, but I just I don't think it's really relevant, to be honest. I think um, we're 20 games into the season, you kind of know what's left and um, we've, we've gone through a tough time, but we're in an okay position. We're not too far um, you know, from where we want to be and it's just about making sure that um, you know, we, we kind of the key for us is progress, you know, that, that we keep sort of improving our football and, like I said, hopefully we get some personnel back which allows us to finish the season strong. If we can finish the season stronger than we've started, then, you know, we'll, we'll be in a good place. But I usually look ahead, mate, not in the rearview mirror. And, you know, Man United, synonymous with Sir Alex Ferguson, 27 years. I'm not going to ask you if you're going to be here for 27 years. I won't but, be, mate. But gen generally, you've... Um, at clubs, you've been sort of three or four seasons, and I think you spoke before about needing to to move on and keep yourself um, moving up. At Spurs, you just spoke about it, everything being aligned. Do you feel like this could be a home for longer than that? Obviously, touch wood, everything going well. If only it was in just my hands, mate. Um, it's not how management works, and um, you know, uh, as much as you all love me right now, it could change very quickly at some point. And uh, again, I, I don't really put a timeline on these things. Um, my role and my responsibility is to try and, you know, from when I was appointed, to get this club into a position where it, it, it has success and competes for, for trophies. And, and none of us have this sort of endless timeline to achieve that, you know, especially at big clubs. Um, like I said, you see it at Man United and, and, you know, as soon as there's a little blip or it looks like, you know, things are slipping away, there's, there's an enormous amount of attention and, um, you know, that changes people's, you know, timeline of how things need to be done out quickly. So I, I don't sort of 
think about it in those terms. Uh, I'm determined to sort of try and, like I said, bring success to the club. Um, every manager works against uh, a sort of anonymous clock um, that we none of us know, you know, when the end time is. So you, if you start thinking in those sort of, you know, those points of reference, and I think it takes you away from what your primary task is. And my primary task and responsibility, as I said, is to bring success here.